oh, this, 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 this is what I wanted to talk about that I almost forgot. We'll end on this. I'm not an expert on this by any means, but the White House is tweeting out, when we have electric cars powered by clean energy, I presume they mean electricity and rechargeable lithium batteries, we will never have to worry about gas prices again. Maybe, but we don't have that yet. And autocrats like Putin won't be able to use fossil fuels as weapons against other nations. He isn't. You are the White House because you could have gotten nationally uh, energy independent on fossil fuels without much problem in Canada. And this goes for you too, Trudeau, in, uh, in the United States. And this goes for you too, Trudeau, in Canada. But setting all that aside, Setting aside the fact that Biden in his first day in office nixed the Keystone Pipeline, Trudeau doesn't want any more pipelines in Canada. He's against the oil sands. He's against uh, oil independence, which I, as far as I'm concerned is a, a national security issue. But what am I? I'm not a politician. Setting aside all of that, that it's as a result of their national policy that we are dependent on oil from autocrat dictators, whether it's Russia, Saudi Arabia, Venezuela, what regardless. And you 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 virtue signaling fools out there who think, oh, we're gonna forget Putin. We're gonna punish Putin. We're gonna go get our oil from Saudi Arabia. We're gonna go get our oil from Venezuela. You guys have you have no clue, no moral clue, no ethical clue, no economic clue, no nothing. You are just ignorant virtue signaling uh fools to think that's a solution and not actually a problem. But setting all that aside, and I'm sorry, you know, we're, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna ban imports from Russia to increase imports from Saudi Arabia and Venezuela. That'll show Putin. And that'll really show Saudi Arabia. Yeah. Setting aside that, when we have when we have electric cars and clean energy, we won't have to worry about gas prices again. Okay. Go back, go back. Where do you, this is my response to that because people just don't think, oh, I've got an electric car, I just recharge it. That electricity just comes out of the ground like magic. I've got a lithium battery, that 2,000 pound lithium battery sitting in, in, in your Tesla, uh, it, it just, it came, it's mana from the heavens, it just fell down. And it's not like lithium and all those rare earth minerals uh, you know, needed to be mined in some African or South American country with tremendous devastating consequences to both the local environment and the local population of people who tend to work at those mines. It's not, that doesn't happen either. And that energy, it doesn't come from hydro plants in native reserve lands, which are flooded so that you can create the hydro dams to create the energy. And in so flooding those lands, you flood acres and th kilometers and thousands of kilometers of woodland. And then the mercury from those dead trees leaches out into the fish. And then the native communities who eat those fish have abnormally high levels of mercury. It's, none of that happens because you don't see it. Because when you plug in your, your, your little electrical cable into your Tesla with its lithium battery, you don't know any of that. So I just said, where do you think lithium for those batteries comes from? How do you think it gets from the mines in Africa? Or maybe South America doesn't have to come in on ships, but it's got to come in. How do you think it gets from the mines to Tesla? Where do you think the electricity comes from? Just because you pillage foreign countries, minerals, and flood native lands for hydro doesn't make it clean morons. And I'm sorry to swear, but you are a moron if you think that lithium energy clean energy as though it does not have any environmental impact. Well, did I respond to their tweet? I probably won't be able to see it. Um, but if anyone had any doubts, let's just, uh, let's just do this for one second and lithium mining images. Boom. Oh, look, it's so, I mean, look, uh, I, this is not to be propaganda because, you know, mines, it, it might be the most environmentally sound mine on earth. Uh, but it's, uh, yeah, oh yeah, there you go. That's what it looks like, people. I, and you wouldn't want to live in that vicinity. You wouldn't want that to be in your backyard. And it's not. And so you walk around with your electric vehicle and your rechargeable lithium batteries and you think it's clean energy because you don't see the waste. And Lord knows what you have to do to dispose of those things afterwards. You know, it's, it's, I, got a, I got a rechargeable lithium battery for my drone and people just chuck it in the garbage. That's, that's fine. Oh, those solar panels? If those solar panels are not disposed of properly, they arguably create more waste than oil mining discovery, whatever, in the first place, refinery. So 
Yeah. So there's that. And I don't use the word moron too often, but when I use it, generally speaking, <laughs> here we go. Yeah, it's it's warranted. Um, just it's just it's just a, you know you know from my understanding, the actual cleanest of all the renewable energies is nuclear, but it's been given such a bad rap because of you know two big incidents. Uh, what was it? Chernobyl was one uh, thousand mile or three mile island. One of those two, you, Fukushima, um, and even still, you know that. Uh, People say like, yeah, we don't we don't want to have uh, we don't want to have oil transportation on on boats going inland and through pipes because it's bad for the environment. Check out what happened in um, in Quebec, Megantic. Check, check, oh, so every now and again a village blows up because uh, oil, you know, a, a train collides and explodes. Every now and again, 150 people get killed. A, a, a Megantic decimated because you didn't want to put it through on pipelines because you could have a leak. A, a, good point. Thomas Sowell, uh, there's no right or wrong answer. There's only trade-offs. But I would argue that the less trade-offs makes it the right answer. But setting that aside, Thomas Sowell, again, have I did read uh, or I listened to white rednecks. What is it? No, uh, white liberals, black rednecks. I listened to it. Uh, I like to stick to the maxims, the maxims of intelligence. It's basically, it's concentrated intelligence. So I don't, you know, the whole book is good. It gives you some history, but maxims. Have, of course, I've heard of Stephen Turley. Uh, he claims the end of secular world peace, the return of civilization states, and the new... Wait a minute, no, who I'm, th I'm thinking of... Um, who's Turley that was the... Jeez, I follow him on Twitter. Hold on. I'm thinking of Turley. Oh, it's Jonathan Turley. Sorry, I don't know I don't know Steve Turley. I know Jonathan Turley, the constitutional scholar who discovered he was no longer um, a Democrat when applying the Constitution made him an enemy to Democrats. Uh, so I have no, well, the, 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 what, uh, would this be called the balkanization of, of states or, you know, uh, and the new multipolar order coming out of the Russian invasion of Ukraine? I have no opinion on it. Uh, I do think the idea of countries becoming more, you know, nationally interested oriented is not a bad thing. Uh, the, the only thing, the only entities that are benefited from these massive umbrellas like the EU, the UN, these multinational corporations or multinational governments are the entities themselves and not the individuals in these respective countries that are, have their own respective national interests that uh, they don't get watered down. They get absolutely ignored and desecrated by the aggregate, which is typically just to fund the machine itself. <sighs> well, someone last at nuclear clean nuclear is, is clean to the extent you don't have any meltdowns and uh, you know, massive explosions. But even even the explosions. Um, hold on, I just saw one about uh, nuclear super clean. That's not what I want to bring up. Oh my god, yeah, ga gas was over two bucks a liter in Quebec. It cost me one hundred and thirty-two dollars to fill up my Subaru Ascent. And, that, and the thing is, like, you got you got your George Takei and your um, what's his face, Stephen Colbert. They have a clean conscience, and they're also worth. I think 14 million and 75 million dollars respectively. And they probably also like Colbert joked, have a Tesla truth in jest. People Colbert says, I don't care if it goes to $15. Wouldn't you rather pay $4 a gallon? If it meant having a clean conscience, heck I'd pay $15 a gallon. Cause I drive a Tesla. Yeah, you do. You know what? You just became Stephen Colbert. You became Krusty the clown in that episode when he's goes back into stand up comedy and he's like, and, and then someone tells me, you got to make comedy that's more for the people and, you know, not so snooty. And he's like, oh, you mean like that time your butler got there? I forget what the joke was. Stephen Colbert has become the exaggeration of Krusty the Clown in The Simpsons, which was already an exaggeration. A snobby, detached, arrogant, pompous fool who is so detached, he doesn't even understand his detachedness. I don't care if it goes, I'd be comfortable with the $15 a liter. I drive a Tesla. Yeah, because you can afford to get a Tesla. You, through your connections, even if you have the money now, you still can't get a Tesla because they're not available. He could get it. Yeah, it's good to be rich. It's good to be connected. It's good to be a snotty, arrogant prick making jokes at the everyday American who I can, I can pay a dollar 32. I can pay 132 bucks to fill up my tank. It's more money than I'd like. It, and, and, and that's fine. But to pretend that this is not a devastating thing on a great many people who now literally have to decide how many times a week they're going to go to work or drive across the city or take their kids to play dates. You're, you're, you're laughing at the face of, of other people's misery. Oh, but yeah, but you got a clean conscience, Colbert. Yeah. The issue, uh, Lynn Westover Jr. Wait a minute. 
is Lynn, is that you from, from Wednesday? Cause dude, you look a little different. <laughs> the issue with the burn pits from the recent wars is not from the shit. It's from the lithium batteries that were burned among other chemicals. Yeah. They, the, the burn pits, I think, you know, people don't know what they are, but they burn the, 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 the waste, but I presume other stuff gets burnt in there as well. And uh, yeah, there's no question that that has caused lasting damage with people. Freaking Stephen Colbert. Food and lumber aren't delivered by electric cars. Yep. <laughs> Freaking Stephen Colbert, man. I don't know. He, he went from being funny to being not funny to being an actual enemy of the people. Um, uh, yeah, live long enough to become the enemy. Found you via Rakeda Law and your coverage in Ottawa. Love your work. Cheers, brother. Thank you very much. I love your avatar. I don't know if that's actually you, but that's a damn good photograph. Oh, okay. $4 super sticker. Thank you. Now let's see. I'm going to try to get to some questions that are not. Yeah, I can't read books either. Got to listen. Made the mistake of buying the thought. Oh, that'll make you angry. I haven't gotten to the end of it yet, but my goodness, I, I said, like, I'm listening to this book and I'm like, RFK. It's like that, that you know, from The Simpsons, like, please stop. He's dead already. Like, Robert, the RFK Jr., the longer you go, I'm like, yeah, Fauci is destroyed. That book just keeps going on and on and it just keeps getting worse and worse and worse. Worst, worse, no, worse and worse and worse. Waste free nuclear is now possible. Um, Oh, here it was Three Mile Island. Here, Fukushima was a 50 year, 50 year old reactor hit by a simultaneous tsunami and earthquake and zero death from radiation leaks. Three Mile Island and Ruskies had quite a few hush hush incidents. Okay, I don't know what that means, but all right, so that's it. I mean, look, those, those are our topics. I'll just uh, continue to dangle around here with some uh, chats. Dr. Turley self admittedly focuses on the optimistic voice of a time of such pessimism. It's PhD profession. Okay, if that going on in your avatar there. It's like a fire. 